And I want to say good morning to everyone who's here in the committee room, those of you who are out uh, in um, other means of communicating uh, in this, our very first hybrid hearing of the subcommittee on commodity exchanges, energy, and credit. We're going to talk today about an exciting and very, very important subject, especially in context of what's going on in our country today. As the economy continues to struggle, the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, Americans in towns both large and small are keeping an eye on not only their own health, but also on their financial bottom line. For all Americans, that includes thinking about the cost of energy that powers our homes, our cars. But for that American farmer, that also includes thinking about additional ways that our farmers can boost their incomes as the farm economy continues to lag. There could be no more important issue than the one we are going to deal with today. We can do without a lot of things, but we cannot do without food and without water. So today's topic touches on both of those things because we're talking about on-farm energy. Energy is a particular concern for farmers, for ranchers. As approximately 15% of production costs for U.S. farms is tied up in energy costs. By comparison, the average American household spends just a little over 2% of its budget on electricity and the same amount for gas. The better a farm operation is able to manage its energy costs, the better it can weather the tough times, like what we're seeing clearly today. I'm excited to have four innovative farmers here with us today. Our witnesses are going to talk about the pioneering work underway on their own farms to explore ways of reducing their energy use, develop alternative sources of energy, and grow more diverse income streams. This is a discussion that I know will benefit every farmer and rancher who's watching. And our discussion of how these folks are going to work on homegrown energy sources on the farm is one that I hope will help move our climate discussion forward as well, highlighting especially the capacity of agriculture as a source of clean, domestic renewable energy. And uh, today we'll look at the programs in the 2018 Farm Bill that help to encourage investment and exploration on, in, uh, in the field of on-farm energy creation, storage, and use. These programs in the energy and conservation titles range from ones that help producers transition to cleaner and more efficient energy systems and ones on the cutting edge of new bio-based energy feedstocks. We'll also look at other ways farmers and are helping to move the renewable energy forward by exploring solutions like our wind, our solar, within their operations as well. In consultation with the ranking member and pursuant to Rule 11E, I wanted to make members of the subcommittee aware 
that other members of the full committee may join us today. And now I recognize Ranking Member Austin Scott for his opening statement. Our national security through our food security. And with that, Mr. Chairman, um, I'll turn it over to you, but I want to thank the witnesses for being here. Well, I want to thank you for your comments. And I want you to know I absolutely agree with you. We have got to do much more to elevate our farmers up at the top of the spear, the lead point in the spear. And I've been telling people, I mean, we need to make sure that our farmers have the financial support to maintain this situation. We definitely need to make them a major part of the next COVID-19 funding package. And I will be there with you on the floor fighting for this. Folks, you know, as, as I keep telling people, food is our most important entity. And our farmers are the captains of the ship. But not only that, we have energy in the name of our committee, commodities, exchanges, and energy, and credit. That means our committee uh, ranking member, we're the engine to move this. And the first order of business is for us to move to start getting this financial package together so we can start advocating it right now. And I'm sure I'm speaking to staff. We need to be the ones to lift up our farmers given this pandemic. Now, I've heard a lot about e-rents. We need to make sure that's alive and well. Our good friend, uh, Mr. Harris from down in Georgia, when I asked him what he felt was the most important thing, he said food labeling. Simple thing that can happen. We need to make sure we take care of that. And getting the type of financial backing to our farmers uh, who are uh, really out there working uh, in a pioneering way with renewable fuels. And uh, you mentioned another thing. When you, you know, we got, we talked with a few other people about the impending when we had the possible food shortages, the meat shortages because of the processors, our processing plants that uh, Tyson's and uh, Smithfield's all went down because of this. And we had to move. There's so much out there. And we need to be the committee, and we are, as long as I'm chairman, as long as you're ranking member. Or if it goes the other way and you become chairman and I'm ranking member, you can believe that the Scott brothers, me and you, we're going to make sure that our farmers are getting the financial respect that they need and deserve, and that we make sure we lift them up. So I want everyone to know how much we really appreciate. This was excellent testimony. I learned a lot today. and. Uh, we're going to carry this on and build on this. And um, our number one priority, if it's, I think you and I agree, is to get a, a COVID-19 package ready for the next tranche that we have. And we've got to start on that right now. And uh, uh, Ashley, I know you're capable of carrying that mission out. We got a great staff. Then I want to thank you also for putting this together. Our very first hybrid. It looks like we may be doing this for quite a while. And I've got to get better. I've got to get me a mask. 
that will keep up. But we will do it. That's simple things like that. And now, <clears throat> under the rules of the committee, the record of today's hearing will remain open for 10 calendar days to receive additional material and supplementary written responses from the witnesses to any questions posed by a member. This hearing of the subcommittee of, of commodity, exchange, energy, and credit is adjourned. Thank you all very much.